Okay, so when I had to decide what to talk about, I thought, like, who am I anyway? And who I am is one more push. So what we're going to talk about today is having higher expectations. Um, this is not news that we get stuff out of kids if we have higher expectations. So you can settle for good answers, or you can push for more, more insight, more connections, more sense making, but definitely more than just right answers. Um, I know lots of teachers are happy when they hear, oh yeah, that's right, that's good, or you can suggest that's great. Now, what about this one? Like, what do you think about that? So as I'm in schools lately, I've been realizing I'm doing this, so I've been practicing my one more pushes. Um, so instead, in a kindergarten class, of asking how many blocks you used, I'm going to say, could you have used more block or less blocks but built a taller building or more blocks to build a shorter building? What sums can you get if you add two next to each other numbers? What sums can't you get when you add two next to each other numbers in grade one or two? Um, I might ask a kid what they can do with 10 ace. These are very Ontario curriculum questions. Um, or I could say you use 10 of a certain size of fraction pieces. I wonder if you could have made more than two holes. If two sides of a triangle are four and six, are there perimeters you can't get? Are there perimeters you can get? What are those perimeters? I'm not interested in this particular perimeter. A kid tells me that three eighths is less than three fifths because fifths are bigger. So I'll say back, are two fifths more than five eighths? You told me fifths were bigger. So I'm pushing a little harder. Instead of asking for the drawing of an obtuse angle, I'll ask for the drawing of the greatest obtuse angle even possible. There is one, no one, by the way. Um, are you sure it is the greatest? In grade six, I could ask them to estimate 25% of 50, or I could say, can 25% of one number be 75% of another number? Is that possible? Tell me about the numbers. In grade seven, I could create a set of data and talk about removing a piece of data and ask how it affected the mean or median, or I could make it more inquiry-based. How could you do it so the median goes down more than the mean? I could do a simple little division of fractions questions, or I could say, you're not allowed to get an answer. Tell me 10 fractions you could put in the blank so that the answer is going to be more than one. I could ask for a slope of a line in grade nine, or I could say, how would you make a line with a slope of three halves look steep? How would you make it look not so steep? I could ask in grade 10 for the cosine of a particular angle, or I could ask if an angle doubles, does the cosine double, or does it more than double, or does it less than double, or does it depend? If I were in grade 11, I could ask about what we call composite functions and what is f of g of x, or I could ask, can every function be written as a composite function? I forget grade 12, it's coming. <laughs> in grade 12, I could ask, what is the expected value if you roll a die? Um, or I could ask kids to create a spinner with unequal sections where the expected value is a particular value. So I tried to put a, one for each of you. Um, I push me all the time to refine and improve what I do, to differentiate my instruction with people like you, to share substance as well as meaning. So I want all of you to walk away with a problem you can do. You could push students not only for correct solutions, but for deeper insights, for deeper understanding, and my favorite one these days is for more generalizations, things that are bigger than one little problem. You could push yourself to expect more of your students and more of yourself, to expect more to be out of your comfort zone some of the time, to make thinking about your practice and questioning your normal game plan part of your gig. We did all start with one more push.